with another episode at libertarianprogressive.com, blogtalkradio.com forward slash election channel, where we interview independent third party candidates. We're a media organization, we're independent, and we interview independent third party candidates who are on the ballots. Um, the full spectrum, Green Party, Independents, Libertarians, no party affiliation, and other parties. We believe if a candidate has gathered enough signatures to be on the ballot and has a statistical chance to win, then responsible media will include them in the debates and interview them to educate and inform the public of their options. So today we have an interview with Napoleon A. Bell, Independents for the Ohio House in District Number 25 for 2016. Let's give him a call here and... Let the, our audience be aware of um, some of their options this year. Hello, it's Napoleon. Hi, Napoleon. This is Thomas Keegan. You're on with uh, blogtalkradio.com slash election channel, uh, libertarianprogressive.com. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon to you. And I was just giving you an intro there before um, we gave you a call here, and you're running as an independent uh, in the great state of Ohio, District Number 25 for the Ohio House, and um, and we're just also looking at your website, which is NapoleonBell.com, and there you can see a list of issues and some more information. And actually, the first question we'd like to ask is if you could cover the three issues that you listed. Um, economics, education, and safety. And if you could uh, inform our uh, listeners, our audience, about the issues that you're running on your platform. Sure, I'd be more than happy to. Well, you know, first of all, um, you know, thanks for calling. I'm, and I'm, I'm glad to have this opportunity to get my uh, uh, message out to, uh, uh, to, to your audience and, and, and hopefully to the voters here in, in Columbus, Ohio. Um, First of all, my edu- you know the the platform of education you know I, I feel very strongly um, you know because we we see education as is the basis uh, you know for 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 putting together this uh, pyramid in a sense of, of 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 making a difference here so it's the basis of I, I feel of of so much and we have to make sure that we have equal access you know to a high quality um, education to to all people and not be determined by your zip code but to all of our young people here. Um, and I say high quality, but also safe education, you know, uh, again, regardless of your zip code. I, I say that because I've spoke to too many young people going to, uh, I've, I've convened and, and been a part of too many youth summits in regards to uh, them feeling safe, whether they're at home uh, and or and going to school. And then also when they're at school, they feel the safest, but they worry about the inside or the outside coming into the inside. And so uh, some of our young people are really, uh, dealing with um, uh, something like PTSD. Um, so I think that we have to make sure that there's equal access to a high quality and safe education. Um, and then adequate funding for uh, wraparound services. You know, I just talked about um, uh, potentially PTSD in our young people and uh, those services that uh, some school districts need to have those services. So we have to make sure that there's adequate funding. Um, for those wraparound services so that our young people have the best opportunity to uh, uh, to be able to learn in that environment. Um, second, I look at, you know, um, statewide is the teacher salaries. Um, we have to really do something about that because they're, they're just um, actually too low. And, you know, and we understand the, the salaries are based upon, you know, um, uh, the, the monies available, but, and that goes back to the uh, uh, funding based upon, you know, the per, per pupil cost. So I think that's right around seven thousand dollars per pupil, which we really have to look at that again um, because that's just not enough to really get the necessary things done in our, and and to have the best outcome and opportunities for our young people and for the teachers uh, uh, in the schools. You know, because we have I, in in Ohio, I believe we have about six hundred and thirteen school districts, you know, in the state, and uh, you know that's and I'm not sure how many kids that is, but you know it, it is something that that we have to address. Uh, because there, there are so many young people that I think are, are slipping through this, the cracks and also just giving up. So we want to make sure that we address that. Um, and then going on beyond, you know, just the, the, the middle school and high school and grade school, we're, we're, you know, we have to look at higher education. Um, you know, we have graduates finishing uh, about, you know, with 80000 or or $100,000 in debt. 
and 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 getting out of college, and then sometimes, and, and many times, uh, not being able to get a job after that, and so they are finding themselves uh, wrapped up in debt and not being able to get a a, a job that is uh, um, um, that can pay the bills, and so that's a problem. And so I'm looking at you know what I want to look at is tuition caps, something that 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 you know when we have our state institutions, uh, we can't be you know educating our kids, but then leaving them so in debt that then, you know, all they're doing, you know, for the next 10, 15 years is paying off debt. So we want to make sure that our our, our graduates have the best opportunity to be able to uh, pour into the community that, that, that they're in um, and not having to be strapped with debt. Um, one of the, the other uh, 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 platform piece is economics. Yeah, and and that's I look at with access to living wage jobs. We've got to make sure that happens. In Columbus, Ohio, in the 25th House District, which I'm running for, we have um, uh, uh, certain areas and, and communities that are struggling. And just to to you know to have a job, that's not a, that's not a possible. You must you must have you know one, two, three jobs to to be able to uh, make it. And so we've got to have access to living wage jobs. Um, and, and the 25th House District, but also I know that the, so many others are dealing with that throughout the state. Um, so what you know I'm looking to do is attract businesses that meet the needs of the of the neighborhoods for community stabilization, because we've got to stabilize these communities. They're they're going through such struggle and and and, and there's loss of hope and and feeling of helplessness that we've got to stabilize our communities. And the first thing is to really bring some jobs so that we can get people busy actively working, and then they will reinvest in their communities by being a part of that community. Um, and so I look at also low interest loans for for small businesses, um, and uh, and also for small business incubators to be able to do to to be able to um, uh, uh, you know start new businesses um, and, and not be over in debt. I, I had a conversation with with one young man who started a trucking business, and the trucking business was was going you know okay, and and, and he was looking to try to purchase another truck. And he says, you know, if I can purchase another truck, I can do so much more work, and also, uh, uh, you know, provide more income and uh, for my family and and for, and for others. And uh, the the cost of being able to do that was, um, he he said that 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 the loans that that he could get were only around 28 to 30 percent interest, and that yeah. just is unreasonable for someone to be able to, you know, to expand their business. They're they're doing well. They want to reinvest. So we've got to look at that. Um, to see, you know, is there that opportunities for um, some low interest loans there? Yeah, that's and, way uh, too much. It, it, it is. I, I couldn't, and, and I talked to more than one person about that. I said, does, "Does this sound right?" <laughs> and and he was he was like, "Yeah, it, it sounds very right." So I just I couldn't believe it, and and so that's really something to be looked at when when we have uh, people that are entrepreneurs and they're saying, "Okay, I'm going to start my own business." Well, we've got to make sure that we provide a, a, a platform for them to be able to, to get started, to get that business rolling, and, and uh, then grow that business. Because it, it, when that happens, we, we all uh, are raised up from that, right? Um, so, and with that, you know, I, I look at uh, uh, workforce development. This is a piece to get people ready um, to be able to go to work. Uh, <clears throat> we've, got, we've got a great workforce out there. It's just that are they ready to work? Are they ready to get those jobs that when they come available? We have a large business that's coming in um, uh, to Columbus, um, uh, close to the to the 25th House District, but it's Rogue Fitness, and, they're, and they're, they build fitness equipment. But they're a large business, and my thing is, are the folk ready in the 25th House District and others to get those jobs? Um, and so that we can make sure that happens through workforce development, uh, through providing you know more funding and 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 to for our workforce development to get people ready to 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 get these jobs because I've heard you know I've lived in Columbus Ohio all my life and all too often I I hear well you know these jobs came into town but uh, the, then the employer says well there's nobody to to nobody skilled with the particular skills that we need to take those jobs here locally in the community and I'm not saying that of rug but I'm just saying you know over the many years that 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 uh, I've I've been here and I've heard that so. 
I want to make sure that when a business is coming in or we're attracting new business to not only the district but to central Ohio, that we make sure that, that um, people are ready to take those jobs. And so it's some proactive work there that, that I want to make sure that happens and that the funding is necessary for that. Um, going on to uh, safety, well, and, and let me just uh, fear off here one because one, mm -hmm. one of my platforms – or things, items that I talk about also, in addition to safety, and I'll get to that in just one moment, is, um, is family. And I, and I say that because of the quality of life of families. And uh, because all, you know, my 23 years of service that I have, have had with the city of Columbus, I've been really grassroots, really working with the communities and, and, and addressing quality of life issues. So, um, you know, one of the pieces of quality of life where I look at is, you know, is, again, with the mental health, issues uh, affecting um, not only our youth, you know, with, with, with PTSD and dealing with um, continual um, crisis in, 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 in environment, but also with those who, who are dealing with addictions, and which is a mental health issue, in which we've got to make sure that, that we have in place those um, agencies and proper funding for those current agencies that can address the mental health issues um, whether it be addictions, whether it be the youth PTSD, because this, uh, this is the health of the community, and this is what is one of those other building blocks for the community. Also here in Columbus, we're doing a, uh, um, uh, uh, we are, I don't know, first or second worst in infant mortality um, and uh, um, in the country. I think we're in the top five, I believe it is. Um, but uh, it, it is it is something that something not to be proud of. But we're we're addressing that issue. But when you look at the statistics and and, and the research that has been done in regards to infant mortality um, in the communities, you can see where we have to have you know these wraparound services. Isn't, you know because these babies are dying you know weekly um, before their first birthday. And when you look at the environmental factors and those cause causations of that. Then you you see these other these other areas crop up when when it comes to mental health when it comes to environment when it comes to all these different things lack of education et cetera so um, I always believe you know when, when we're addressing issues we must look at them holistically um, to address those issues and not just put a band aid on something um, so uh, looking at infant mortality you know these once again quality of life issues vacant and abandoned housing is a real problem. Um, and, 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 and some communities here in, in central Ohio. I know we have that on, on, in my district, particularly in the 25th House District, and we've got to address those, and, and, and that is dealing with either, you know, the, the current owners or, or owners who are, who are the, the vacant, uh, you know, uh, owners who, who have gone somewhere else and, and have just left the uh, property to, to fall apart, uh, we've got to have some more stringent policy to address these issues so that the cities can be able to um, address them quicker. Oftentimes through code enforcement and others, it takes so long, uh, too long, to be able to uh, take over and address these, these issues for the, for the health of the community. Um, and then, you know, often in, 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 uh, uh, in families, the families, you know, uh, you know are sometimes it's, it's only a, a woman is the head of the household. You know, the, the, the father is gone for whatever reason, but we have these, these single women who are, who are raising families. So being the head of households, you know, but they're still paid, you know, less than the male counterpart, you know, and, and for doing the same job. You know, what was about 78 cents on the dollar. That has to change. It has to change. Um, because, you know, one in four women in central Ohio, are, I believe, are, are not economically secure. And um, currently they, they can experience, um, uh, well, currently the unemployment rate for um, single women is about 7%. So we've got to make sure that, that, that we address those issues and, and, and making sure that the, you know, for, for women are, are, are paid equally to, to men. Um, because one of my positions as, as, uh, um, when I worked for the city was I was the director of the Columbus Community Relations Commission. And working for that commission, we enforced the Civil Rights Code and housing, employment, and public accommodations. So when I see these things happen and disparate treatment, um, I feel very strongly that we have to address these issues. Uh, um, so the last piece um, was the safety. And um, safety is, is, is a, a, a piece that's, that's definitely been on the news. Um, Recently, and it's, and it's a, um, a piece that I, I also feel strongly about in regards to making sure 
uh, that the adequate resources and, and, and are necessary. So, you know, in, in the state of Ohio, we have, uh, I think it's 831 police agencies. About So it comes out to about 26,000 sworn officers. <clears throat> Could be a little more than that now, a um, little more, a little less. But uh, I want to make sure that, you know, I understand there's a pot of training, but I want to make sure all the, the, the agencies have standardized training um, and so that they have to meet these requirements. And currently, I know there, there's, there's, a, there's through a pot of the requirement, but I think that the, the, the level needs to be upped a little bit um, and to make sure that uh, there's also the de-escalation and cultural competency training. Because in the city of Columbus, we're a very diverse community, um, but also it is, it is happening around, or around the state. So I want to make sure that, there, that there's a standardized training that, you know, whether you're a small department or a large department, that you're getting the same type of training and the same amount of training. Columbus, I know, does, I think, 600 more hours than, than what is required by OPADA. I believe that's the number. <clears throat> um, so I, I think that, you know, we sh the, the other, other uh, we should have best practices of, 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 of what is needed, but make sure that, that we make sure all our officers are getting that training and that they have the resources, that the, that the uh, agencies get the necessary resources, the necessary funding to be able to do that to, to have to do that training because when there is training, then they're off the streets, and so they have to have officers that are on the street during those times also. So I want to make sure that that happens or, or, or really press on that. Um, currently, I, I know with, within Columbus, Ohio, they're getting body cameras, um, and that's coming up here uh, uh, very soon. I think in 2017, they should, those should start to roll out, um, which is a, a good thing, but... Um, um, we, we need to, to um, make sure that happens and that there's proper resources available for that to happen across the state. So again, that we're on the, that everybody's doing the same thing. Um, and then reducing crime. One piece that I feel strongly about in reducing crime, um, that we can reduce crime through reducing recidivism, right? Um, uh, recidivism, you know, within the first year uh, after release is, is is very high and it just continues to get higher well in the second third year so the we have to address that um to make sure that our our penal systems um pre and post release the programs that they have in there are measurable uh have measurable outcomes but also are resourced properly and and and, and understand that 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 makes sure that the programs that work Right, so I know um, DRC has in implemented some some changes recently, but we also I feel as though we must build upon them, so to continue to make that go and have that going in the right direction. Um, but when we look at post-release, post-release, um, they they often get out and uh, run into a uh, um, into a problem of uh, uh, of, of 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 recidivism. Uh, because of the fact that they don't, that they get out, they, you know, if if they can't get a job and they can't, then they can't put a roof over their heads, and then they can't eat, and so then you're going right back to the community that 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 you had the problem with, and then right back into the same problem. Well, I think, uh, you know, I think we should go to a public works program, you know, which is, uh, uh, uh you know, a labor works that 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 you're doing. A, a job that provides a skill, and it could be, you know, something from lawn care to cleaning the streets and what have you. But it's a public works program that's geared toward felons. <clears throat> so putting them back to work, so they come out, and they putting them back to work. They're put, getting some money in their pocket to be able to do the things necessary to provide for their families, to get a roof over their head, and to feel as though that they are somebody. So that we aren't, when when felons return to, uh, when people have done their done their time and they're returning to the community, that they're not doing another life sentence out in the community because there are so many obstacles in their way that they that they cannot uh, uh, survive and or it's just so difficult that uh, that it's hard to do that. So I'm hoping to, that we can look at a public works program that's that's geared toward felons. Um, and then uh, lastly, um, with with these issues that that we just had with this tragedy. Um, death of this young 13-year-old child um, when he was carrying a, a, a BB gun and, and the officer um, fired upon him and, and, and um, tragically the, the young boy was killed. Well, 
Uh, I know currently we have a, a there's there's a law in place in regards to um, uh, guns that look like uh, real guns um, or look alike guns, but they are uh, um, it only applies toward toward you know some of the um, uh, what do you call them? Speed, or not, or um, water guns and those type of things, but there is a, uh, um, uh, but it does not apply to those guns such as uh, BB guns um, or pellet firing guns. So it says anything with with an air projectile, explode projectile through the force of air pressure. So I feel that we need to amend that uh, and to uh, also address. BB and paintball and pellet firing, firing air, air weapons, because this isn't the first time this has happened. I know in the country, I, I live long enough to, to see this happen in the past when it happened to be a pellet gun or a squirt gun or something to that effect that looked so much like a real gun. Um, so those are those are the areas, my platform, um, in which I, I I feel strongly about. I know there's there's um, you know other things that I know within the 25th House District that. I really want to address, um, uh, including, you know, we, we, we must come together um, as, as, as a district, as a city, um, to address issues collectively, um, regardless from what party that you're from and, or what your background is or ethnicity. We've, we've got to think about, you know, servicing um, our young people, our community as a whole. And I think that we can, we, I truly believe we can come together to do that because I feel that we're all trying to get to the same place. It's just a matter of how we get there. All right. Well, Napoleon, I appreciate that. And um, I do have some follow-up questions. I have a list of five follow-up questions I'd like to ask. Um, some of them you addressed, like you already addressed the body cameras, which I think is an important thing. And um, it's being implemented across the country. It's positive, I think, for police officers and the civilians. Um, and also regarding the recidivism, I mean, um, recently I saw an article about Denmark's prison system. Now, I'm not saying we should necessarily do that exactly, but we could probably learn a few things from it. And um, and you were a police officer at one point, is that correct? I think I read that. Yes, yes, I was. I was uh, in, uh, a police officer from uh, '93 to 2005, as far as a, a full-time police officer, and then I became a reserve officer for another 11 years. Awesome. And let me just ask you before I ask these follow-up questions, um, why are you running as an independent um, and uh, instead of, you know, one of the main two parties? Well, you know, I, I transitioned, you know, so I was working with the city of Columbus um, up until February of, uh, of 2016. So, and things happened pretty quickly on the transition. So, um, um, I, I, you know, I had to, to run as a, independent but run as an independent was a piece also that I felt you know strongly about because in my job as director of CRC we often we were we were the uh the organization that that people came to to mediate issues to address issues to bring people together we so we were the convener and as a director I convened many of uh, meetings and 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 uh and dealt with many different entities. Um, we we even you know did police relations. Um, we started a, pro, a pro process called the community intervention teams, which is actually bringing together leaders of the community, working together with law enforcement and others to come together to sign off on a document um, at the end of, a, of an agreement to of how to address issues going forward. So this is the type of this was um, the work that that I did. And also, as a police officer, I was a liaison officer. So, a community liaison officer. We have 20 community liaison officers that work with block watches, civics, area commissions, um, and community. We work on it, we work on issues to provide long-term solutions. So, it was in, it's always been my nature to bring people together to address issues. And so, as a independent, I felt you know, I, I and looking at the national um, elections and things that were going on, just the environment. I feel so, you know, I've got, I'm the type of person who wants to do the right thing and wants to bring people together to, to address issues and resolve those issues to be able to go forward to, to remember that we stay focused on the community. Because I feel as though sometimes that's lost. So we're so busy fighting with each other. 
uh, you know, whether between parties or what have you, that we lose the focus on the residents and the community. So as an independent, um, it's, I, I feel it's, it's a great position because of the fact that I want to be focused on the community. And, and, and I want to bring uh, the two parties together, because I understand it, in, in the House of Representatives, you know, it's, um, even a, if it was to be as a Democrat, you know, you're the minority party, and, and trying to get things done is difficult as far as to get legislation passed, um, or even heard at, at some times. But the thing is, with the skill sets that I have and the work that I've always done, I feel as though to be able to, and, and the relationships that I've built and the leaderships, leadership that I have shown through, I can work with Democrats, Republicans, um, independents, um, the, commu- the, 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 the community of, the le- of, of legislators to be able to really drill down and make sure that, that we continue our focus on the, uh, uh, the community and um, uh, address those issues that way. So as an independent, I think that is more possible that we can get through this gridlock. And we can get through, um, and we can make sure people stay focused on on the task at hand, being the residents of of of, of for me it'd be of uh, you know the 25th House District, and then also for the state of Ohio. Well, I admire anyone running as a representative for the people um, for the right reasons, and especially someone who's running as an independent. Um, so I do want to ask just a range of like state type issues here and um, some of them will cover back it will be follow-up questions on your three main issues but I did have some issues I wanted to ask you that probably would affect your area um, you know we heard about the water issues like in Michigan and I, I think what I've read there might have been some across the country and maybe in Ohio um, you know is, uh, will, will you be looking into um, you know the quality of water drinking water if you're a representative. Well, yes, I mean, definitely. If, if that's a problem within our state, most definitely. I know that, that um, you know, as I was uh, working with the city as a director, you know, I was uh, uh, sat next to often the, the director of, uh, or not, but, but the director of, uh, uh, of, of utilities and what have you. And, and I know with the city, it was, it was, it was definitely a concern to make sure that the drinking water was, was, was clean and safe and uh, didn't have any issues there. And if there was something that was cropping up, that, that it was quickly addressed. Um, so statewide, um, it's, it's, it's very important. You know, when again, when I think about uh, quality of life, you know, and, 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 and the family, and, and, and drinking water is, 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 is up there, you know, number one, in regards to that this is something that's coming into our households um, that will, can affect us negatively, uh, um, as it's done with those in, in, in Flint. So we, we've got to make sure that there is are, are the safety of that um, and that the plants are safe um, and uh, um, address any issue quickly and make sure that the, the public is aware if there is an issue that, 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 that so proper measures can be taken and that, you know, that, that they can be advised of that. Okay. And what about um, – I'm just going to run through a couple issues quick here. What about um, – Eminent domain. Do you think there could be some more safeguards on that? Yeah, you know, with with eminent domain, I I I do um, I do worry about that, um, and uh, I, I want to make sure that you know bound, boundaries aren't overstepped in that area, um, because I, I I've I've talked to a uh, few people that have have dealt with that. And and it, it you know it, it was tough, so I think there needs to be you know uh, a look at the positives and the negatives about you know how far reaching that that that, that goes. Um, uh, so I, I we really need to keep keep a keep an eye on that, but but also be a part of the conversation. So I always say that you know when, when we have these things, we got to continue the conversation. Um, and, and can continue to have the input of of the community in these conversations because they're the ones that are affected by this and impacted by this and to, and and that's one thing I, I really pride myself on is 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 to be that person who listens to the community, who um, uh, works with the community, but uh, most importantly, you've got to you know hear hear what they're saying. 
often we, we might, you know, they might yell and be upset because they're passionate about what's going on. But we've got to we've got to peel back the layers of that onion and really work and to, and to address those issues because this this is you know something that you know people are losing homes et cetera on this and and so we we've, we've got to really take a take a good look at that and and make sure that that there's uh, um, that it's done properly. Yeah, yeah, it's a concern to you, and you'd want to make sure it's as fair as possible. Um, now, what about? Yes. Um, property tax like property taxes there's people some people might lose their homes because they don't aren't able to pay the bills should they have extensions and also regarding property taxes that's usually what funds education so um you know you could be from a rich neighborhood have a very nice school um and due to no fault you know or you know any consequence of your own actions just because you happen to be in a good neighborhood so um if you could touch on the two aspects of property tax, some people losing their homes because they can't pay the property tax, they have an extended time, and then just overall the reform um, to equalize educational opportunities. Yeah, through, well, you know, it, it's, it's. I, I never like to hear the, uh, of the issue of someone losing their home due to a property tax issue. Um, and and I'm, I'm, it's good though that there's you know that there's extensions available, um, um, especially now. I mean we're on the you know we're pretty much on the rebound or, uh, in regards to the the last recession which affected so many. Um, but you know you come down to uh, uh, you know again we, we're looking at opportunities for success based upon your zip code, and um, it is something that that with. Uh, Property taxes. Um, well, I, I got. I could get into a whole thing in regards to gentrification and so on and so on. Um, but it, it is something that that I think that um, we need to look at overall. Um, and it's hard for me to to really address um, with one instance or, or 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 one answer because there's so many things I think that play into it. Um, and again, like I said, I, I I'm I don't like a band aid. I like to be able to Look at the 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 whole piece and be able to then um, have those conversations with whether it be the the um, persons who are, are are impacted and also those you know um, on both sides on should I say on all sides of this. So I know property taxes goes goes in, you know into the schools and what have you, um, and that if you're in a more fluent area, your opportunities are better. Um, but we, I know that also. Um, 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 I'm trying to think of the the, the local schools um, on the funding there, and depending upon how, how that breakdown is. But I wish I had a good answer for you um, on that, and I and I and I really don't. Um, I would have to really look at look at it overall and 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 be better informed on the the overall issue. Well, we appreciate that, and I do see a holistic approach. I mean, even looking at your issues, it starts with economics and, and education, which will eventually affect the economics, and um, so so they kind of go hand in hand, and as far as recidivism, I mean, that all affects economics, and it affects what we have to spend publicly, so it is very holistic. Um, just um, before I get into some justice system reforms, um, like... Uh, just one other question for local um, representatives. Do you think there could be any reform um, or safeguards, let's say, for asset forfeiture? Hmm. Um, you know, I, 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 have, I have addressed that. Um, I... Well, the reason we ask is, you know, there's the war on drugs... Um, and recently, I've seen a statistic that asset forfeitures have, um, you know, gotten. There's more asset forfeitures than there actually has been uh, uh, burglaries. Um, and uh, a lot of times, people might have their assets seized uh, before they have a court hearing and, and things like that. So it just be something to maybe look into. Um, I don't know how much of an issue it is in the state of Ohio, but. Um, I did want to address on you mentioned body cameras um, and uh, and just 
people having confidence in the justice system. I'm sure everyone appreciates a good, honest police officer and looks up to a good, honest police officer. Um, what are some other reform, reforms? Do you think um, uh, there should be an independent internal affairs? You already mentioned better training. Um, and, and maybe, you know, with that better training, um, having the resources for the police officers, uh, do you think there is a quota system um, as far as police departments go? And, and I know a lot of them say there isn't, but it seems like, you know, maybe there is. And, and could there be some safeguards for whistleblowers who want to speak out against that or maybe some safeguards to make sure that there isn't actually a quota system? Okay, so, um, so let me, are you talking about quota system as far as like writing tickets? You have to have write so many tickets, et cetera, et cetera. Is that the sure, quota, stuff or? like that, okay. yeah. So um, so let me, I'll address the quota system and go to the other ones. Um, I know as far as, and, and I can only speak for the Columbus Vision, please, because that's what I'm, I formerly worked for, um, that that there was there's not a quota system as far as tickets and what have you, you and you didn't get paid anymore, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I, I, um, now, if you're a part of freeway patrol, and this might apply to the state highway patrol, if there's not, you know, if if that's what you're doing, and, and you're to enforce the the um, speed limits on the highways, and you don't write any tickets, and then that's that can be problematic. So problematic because that's your whole job. Now, as far as the average patrol officer, um, there there are not any quotas within the Columbus Division of Police, um, and I and and I feel. Um, now statewide, that uh, there sh there should not be any quotas, um, if 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 there are for the local police officer on the street, I, I don't see why there would be a quota for tickets. Um, but um, in regards to overall, when we talk about um, you know what could be done to it sounds like to be to better build trust um, within the with between community and police. You know, there were there were several things that I know that that my I worked on um, when I was with uh, as a director. You know, we we started a program called the ABCs of Police and Fire. As a matter of fact, there's still videos on YouTube about uh, with it. And this this was a, a program that myself and uh, I think it was Commander Jeff Blackwell. He was commander at that time, um, and also Lieutenant Dave Sawyer of the Columbus Fire Department. We put together. And, and had a live TV show um, talking about what's going on in the community, you know, the uh, rules and procedures, et cetera, and it was a call-in show. So people could, could call into the television show and talk about, um, you know, and ask questions of the police officer and firefighter. And then we took it on the road. We did it out in communities, and we did, and, and that what we did is we, we, we um, actually did uh, the reenactments, and, or not reenactments, but uh, we did role-playing. And so we did taser demonstrations, we did role playing of traffic stops or, or shooting scenarios, all of those with the community to help them better understand, you know, why police and firefighters do what they do, but also to have the police officer and firefighters there to understand the perspective uh, of the community when an officer does X, Y, and Z, right? And uh, so we did that um, for, for, for many years, starting, I think, in 2004. And then we uh, actually started doing it in different languages. So we started doing it in Somali because we have a high Somali population, I think the second highest in, in the country behind uh, Minneapolis, and, uh, um, and, uh, and also did it in uh, Spanish. Um, so then we developed DVDs for this so that they could give out to the community about how to interact with the police and fire departments. So this was uh, a piece that we did for a long time, and, and then... Um, uh, it, it continued to, to, to grow a little bit, and, and, and now I think the, the police are doing this uh, in the high schools. Um, so these type of things to continue educating uh, community about why police and fire do what they do, but also to have that connection and a positive atmosphere between the, the police and community and, and, and police and, and the schools. Um, uh, this is something that I, that I feel as though is very positive and, and, and helps uh, each other understand each other. Um, and uh, so that's a big thing. So uh, I, I think that uh, has been has worked well. Um, and uh, I think, you know, more of that is, is the more we can do of that, the better, the more connection. I mean, there, you know, when we talk about community policing, that's what it's all about 
is to uh, get out of the cruiser and, 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 and walk the neighborhoods, talk to folk. And I think that could be a part of also, you know, when, when I talked about enhancing the standardized training or making sure we have uh, the same training, uh, that potentially could be part of the training to take the recruits out into the communities that, that don't necessarily look like them and, 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 and build that awareness and understanding of, of the various communities that you're going to be working in. Um, Great. Well, I was just going to say, NapoleonBell.com, and, um, and you seem like the type of police officer that everyone, um, you know, would have wanted in their neighborhood, um, and, uh, and the type that person that we want to send to uh, represent us. Um, and just two follow-up questions, and uh, we have five minutes, or we got four minutes and a half left here. Um, okay. Do you think the war on drugs should be treated as more of a health problem rather than a criminal problem? And then finally, I just want to just add in the last question here. Uh, can you tell us some of your favorite people, past or present, elected or not? Okay. Um, uh, war on drugs. Uh, you know, I, I you know the war on drugs was was was, was something, um, and uh, it should be. It's it's definitely a health problem. We have, we we have a health issue, um, and and persons who are taking drugs, and it goes back to what I said earlier, taking drugs and 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 uh, uh, mental health issues, uh, because anytime you you talk to anybody in AA and 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 what have you that that deal with those persons who have, who have drug issues, it comes down to mental health and those other issues that then began the, the drug problem so it's truly a me- mental health issue and I, and I think we should treat it as such um, um, and then you say the, the the last question was who who would I hey, some, who would I yeah some sorry, of your favorite people uh, yeah just some of your favorite people past, past or present um, elected or not well you know I, I my favorite pe- people, you know, I, I, I think of the, peop- the, the, the person who, you know, mentored me really, and, and, and who I've always looked up to, and, and, and I've got to go to, to my father. Um, he was a lawyer here in the city of Columbus. He was uh, definitely a civil rights advocate. He was uh, um, uh, very well respected. Um, he, he, he thought of people first. Uh, um, and uh, you know, after his passing in 2012, I can't tell you how many people came up to me and just said, "I respected your father so much." And, and so that is who I try to, um, um, uh, however I can, be you know, fill those shoes, which which I'm still working on on that. Uh, so I, I, I really uh, just look up to him more, more than any, you know, more more than anybody else. I mean, him, my mother, my father, but um, but. My, my my father really has continues to give me guidance during those times, and 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 he would, I don't know what he would be saying about me running for office because he never ran for office. They wanted him to run for judge, but he never ran for office. He was the chief counsel for Governor Celeste, um, but uh, uh, I, I think he would be proud that that at, at least I'm continuing to stay involved in the community and really passionate about people. Um, and, and I say really passionate about humans, people, you know, all people here uh, in the 25th House District and, and the state of Ohio because everybody is important. And uh, so, yes, he, he's, he's my, my, my number one. Uh, you know, my family, you know, is, 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 is always first in my mind. And so um, that, that's, that's who leads me. He, he, he and God, you know, lead me to, to make sure I do the right things. Sounds good. And what's um, in the final time we have left here? What's a pitch to your district um, and uh, any upcoming events, Napoleon? We appreciate your time today. Oh, not a problem. Well, I, I tell you, my, my my last, you know, my, my my final pitch in a sense is, you know, uh, I, I have twenty twenty three years of service to the community. I'm very passionate about the the city of Columbus, the twenty fifth house district. I care about all the people in, in in Central Ohio, all the people in Ohio. Because I know there there are those who are struggling and those who 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 are doing well, but I think we all need to come together. We are in some very tough times, politically, uh, emotionally, uh, environmentally. We we are in some tough times, and we need to come together to lift everyone everyone up, 
to be able to make a difference. Um, my tagline is get involved, get engaged, and together we can make a difference. And I strongly feel that. Um, I, I think there is nothing that we cannot do collectively, but we just have to make sure that we keep, stay focused on why we do what we do. And I urge all elected officials, all persons of civil service, uh, civil servants, and, and everyone to remain focused on why we're here and what we're here to do and uh, um, to really make a positive difference because we all want the same thing. And, and, and that's what we need to stay focused on. It's just a matter of we work collectively to get there. And, and don't mind who gets the credit, but just let's make sure that we get to where we need to go. So I'm hoping that, that I earn the vote. Um, I, I've, I'm up against some odds of, uh, of, of being the independent, as, as your, your, your show states. Um, but I think that people will be, as, as, an, you know, as an informed voter, and I tell people, make sure you're informed about who you vote for. Uh, and especially in the 25th House District, do the research. Look who who has the leadership style that you that that you want to represent you, and as a state representative for the 25th House District, don't just vote for someone that you see on a piece of paper. You know, we work too hard uh, to be able to have the right to vote. So exercise your right, but make sure you're an informed voter to exercise that right. Thank you, Napoleon, and thank you for taking the time to uh, inform our audience that uh, they, there are more options, um, not less options, than Republican and Democrat. You have an independent running here um, in Ohio, District Number 25, and again, please visit NapoleonBell.com, and you'll see the events and, and everything there. So thank you so much for taking the time. We really, really appreciate you doing that and uh, engaging with us and uh educating and informing the audience here. Thanks so much, Napoleon. Thank you. Have a great week.